No, no, no. To win a championship, it takes soul. This season, it's all about unfinished business. In Philadelphia, it's about ring number four. Now it's time to finish what we started. Now it's time to get serious. Get your popcorn ready. It's gonna be a show. Now sit back and relax, because Arena Bowl 32 is next. Times Union Center with the AFL Hall of Famer Sed Bonner. I'm John Mita Perel and said you quarterbacked Arizona to a championship 25 years ago. You know what it's like to win it all. The butterflies must be prevalent at this moment. Absolutely, especially when you're on the road as Philly is. This building is raucous. These fans know all about it. It's a home game for Albany. Philly going on the road trying to steal one. One thing about that Albany offense, though, they are dynamic, led by the two best receivers in the league in Quentin Sims and Malachi Jones. Quentin Sims, the bigger of the guys, the guy they're going to go to in the red zone, 59 receptions on the season. And yes, that's right, that's not a typo. 29 touchdowns on 59 receptions. He was the big man among big men down low. Malachi Jones, get the ball in his hands any way you can. 1,440 receiving yards. He is explosive, he is dynamic, has extremely great hands, and is not afraid of the contact. And look at the wheels down the field, turns the defender around, he is a special player. Yes, he is, and his numbers are special as well. How about Tommy Grady, over 3,000 yards, he's the MVP, and then Jones and Sims combined for 54 touchdowns. Philadelphia's defense, though, is feisty, and they are a ball hawking unit. Man, they know how to pick off passes. They do. They've gotten extremely better up front, which has helped on the back end. Those guys on the back end, Dwayne Hollis, number 22, ball hawk, has gotten better with each game this season. Five INTs, 50 tackles. He is a guy that reads and trusts what he sees in front of him and goes and makes plays. This defense led the league in interceptions with 16, and there's James Romaine, he's the Defensive Player of the Year. Yeah, three pick returns for touchdowns, eight on the season. He is a dynamic player and unafraid to take chances on the defensive end. How about those numbers? Not too shabby either. 12 sacks in the 16 picks led by Romaine and Hollis. Clint Dolzell, the Philadelphia coach, he's cool and Clint. He has three titles as a head coach. And we're going to take a peek inside their locker room and the Albany locker room as well. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the crowd. Feed off of it, but control it. Okay? First team that controls it is going to win the game. All right? You're going to be nervous. I mean, that's part of it. I'm. Y'all with me on that? Yeah. Win is the only thing that matters tonight. Y'all with me on that? Yeah. Unselfish football. Do whatever it takes for your brothers. And let's ride out tonight. More to know. Get yourself a break. Let's go. Ah. Ah. The always energetic Rob Keith. He'll get you ready to play. Arena Bowl 32. The kickoff is next from Albany. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. 
Okay, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. It's the first Arena Bowl in Albany in 20 years. Arena Bowl 32. Welcome back inside the Times Union Center with Seth Bonner. I'm John Mita Perel. Let's go downstairs to another member of our broadcast crew, Meredith Gorman, with a special guest. Malachi, all season long, you guys have had the words unfinished business on the back of your helmets. Tonight, it's finally Arena Bowl 32. How do you finish what you started? We come ahead and we start fast. We do the things that have got us here with our one and all mentality every week. We got to score in every possession on offense and get defensive stops and everything else will take care of itself. This Empire team has a very talented group of receivers, yourself included. You're going up against one of the most dangerous secondaries in the league. What's the key to getting past them? Just uh, we can take what the defense gives us, and when it's your number, go make a play. Thanks, Malachi. Good luck tonight. Thank you. And we're going to send it over to J.J. Raderink, who has a member of Philadelphia's secondary, James Romaine. Thank you, Meredith. James, one of the best secondaries in the league. I don't think anyone will argue that. Going against one of the best achieving courts tonight, what do you have to do to slow him down? Well, the key to stopping eight offense is getting to Tommy Grady. I feel if we could get pressure on him and get a couple of hits on him and have him flush it back there, we should have a good night. Now, you've been here before. A lot of the guys have been here before. Anything different about this experience as opposed to those other games? Um, feels like 2016. You know, we coming in the underdog. You know, we playing against a, a, a great team in Albany. You know, I just feel like our role is a little bit bigger than the, the other championships we've been in. I see the goosebumps. I know you're ready to go. Oh, yeah. John, back to you. All right, thanks very much, J.J. James Romain. Always a dynamic presence in that backfield. And if you want a chance to win an official AFL game ball or other AFL memorabilia, think you can predict what's going to happen better than your fellow AFL fans? Don't forget, if you're over 21, go to contest during tonight's game. Tonight's games are now live, and our featured Arena Bowl challenge prop pick is which wide receiver will have the most receiving yards. Darius Reynolds of Philadelphia, Darius Prince of Assault, Malachi Jones of Albany, or Quentin Simmons of Albany. Go to games.arenafootball.com, make your live picks, and play for a chance to win official AFL prizes. That's a tough prop bet, Sid. That is. A lot to choose from now, there. Now, 50% right if you go with a Darius. I, yes, you are. That's pretty good odds. How about Darius Reynolds emerging as a receiver for Philadelphia? We'll get into that as Albany won the toss. They deferred it until the second half. They will kick it off as it hits the slack net. Jordan Williams will sit in the end zone, and Philadelphia will have the football deep in its own territory. Dan Radabaugh pulls the trigger for the Philadelphia Soul. Radabaugh second in the Arena Bowl ranks with 97 completions. A storied career, 21 touchdowns, over 1,100 yards. He gets the ball out faster than any quarterback in the league. He really does, and, and I think key for Albany is to keep him off track. When he is on rhythm and, and completing passes and, and understanding and liking what he's seeing, he is unstoppable because this offense is that good when it's going, and it runs through number five. Yeah, they're coming off a series against Washington where they scored over 115 points. The quick hit right down Broadway past the 15 and a completion as Philadelphia connects to Darius Prince. Right now for the Philadelphia starting offense, brought to you by Transfinder after a 12-yard gain. Adrian Fern, second team all arena league. Terrific receivers in Bun, Prince, and Reynolds. Absolutely, guys that can all get it done. And then up front, really important, Philip Keith Manley, uh, Keith Newell, and Neil Tivis. These guys will be tasked with stopping some of the best pass rushers in the AFL. We'll get to those guys in a moment. So a first down for the Soul will send Darius Reynolds in motion. Right about the deep drop. And incomplete. Good coverage by Tevin Homer, an all-arena cornerback against B.J. Bunn. And the Transfinder Albany starting defense lines up this way. Joe Sykes is the all-time sack leader in Arena Football League history. Absolutely. Sykes, five-time defensive lineman of the year. Jeremy Richardson brings it from the Mac linebacker spot. Ter Terrence Moore was the defensive player a year, a year ago. Homer, rookie, Norrells, and look at These guys have gotten better and better. The young secondary, I think, is what's really been deadly for them. They've been, been able to do a lot more man-to-man -man coverage. Rob Keefe has been known as a zone guy. With these young players, they've done a lot more man. Yeah, Homer led the league in tackles with 85. The deep ball for Darius Prince, and Philadelphia is on the board first. 
How do you like that? Dan Radabaugh, 34 yards to the Fresh Prince of Philadelphia for six. You can't ask for a better you, throw, Sid. You cannot. You can't ask for a better play call. You catch him in the man. He bends him towards the corner and then runs the post route and really sets Homer down. Tevin Homer thought he was going to settle down and stop his feet. And I'll tell you what, Prince, since bursting on the scene in 2017, has been dynamic for this Philadelphia Soul offense. And the extra point try by Kenny Spencer is good, and Philadelphia leads seven to nothing. There's Darius Prince, who caught 21 touchdowns this year, many of them this variety, as he goes deep. And Dan Radabaugh, more than likely, he'll find him if he's wide open, and he did just that. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Welcome back to Albany. And let's take a look at how Philadelphia gets on the board. Take a look at Tevin Homer, the right side of your screen. He is a defender up there, and he's locked down on the ball. The other two defenders give the look of man coverage. They're not really getting deep, getting out of there. But watch Homer settle his feet for just a second. Right there, and it's over. It's over. Once he settled his feet, the help can't get there from the backside. It happens too fast. He didn't slow him down. Great read by Prince, and way to be on the same page with your quarterback. you got to have a short memory if you're a defensive back in the Arena Football League set. And Tevin Homer's been such a star this year out of Florida Atlantic. He was in the Redskins preseason camp a couple years ago and he's a guy that they really rely upon here's AJ Coney who gets hit right away at the five yard line a thunderous shot by Kent Richardson let's go downstairs to JJ Roderick with Darius Prince yeah Darius got the team on the board here early walk me through that play on that third down conversion uh, we went indie formation right there um, from the three previous games we played them we know how they're going to play that formation so we just went Indy. Coach gave me a choice route to either go post or corner. Based on how uh, Homer was playing me, I went post. Dan put the ball up there and I made a play. Thank you very much, Darius. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, thanks, JJ. Darius Prince still learning the position. He's the first to admit that, but he's had a terrific season as Tommy Grady, the league MVP, takes the deep drop and misfires for GJ Stevens. As Stevens came on late in the season for Albany. Brady part of this offense, which averaged 65 points in their last three games, and those numbers just superb, including 259 yards per game. He, he's a special guy, man. He is uh, the only thing he hasn't done in this league. He's his third MVP. The only thing he hasn't done is won an Arena Bowl title. And he's been locked in on a mission to try to get that done this year, all season. And he's so good, said this guy once threw for 142 touchdowns in a season. And there's a drop by Malachi Jones, who has to dive on it quickly. A rare misfire to Jones. And the Albany offense brought to you by Transfinder. Michael Benson was a first team All Arena fullback. DJ Stevens, Malachi Jones, and Quentin Seems, they all were terrific. And three of those four first team All Arena players Mo Ruffins, Ryan Cave, and Jordan Mudge, these guys really get it done and, and Ruffins is another aspect of this offense they don't even use very much great tight end great hands you see him right there left side number 93 and Michael Benson they get involved in the offense as well so this is a very dangerous offense so third and ten for the Empire Brady surveys and has Jones past midfield but he loses it the barrier it gets punched away by James Romaine the defensive player of the year Causing the turnover, Philadelphia dives on it, and they're in business again. I tell you what, this is a, a great route and catch, but a better. Recovered by Philadelphia, first down. 
But a better play to finish the play by James Romain. He gets turned around on this route by Malachi Jones. It's a beautiful throw and catch. But once he tries to make that move, it's punched out right there. That's a great job of forcing that ball out of there by James Romain doing what he's done. Three INTs last week. He's been special. What well, we said about their feisty defense in the open, they caused turnovers and they're in business. And that's what Clint Dolzell's philosophy has always been. Turn well, it over at a rapid rate. Tyrell Robinson. Make no mistake, this, this would be a huge loss for Philly. This would be a huge loss for Philly right there. Comes up lane. Ah. Left ankle gets rolled underneath him. And this would be a huge loss for them. He, since coming on, he's only played in the playoffs in arena football ever. Yeah. This has been the first action he's ever gotten. Eight and a half tackles, two tackles for loss, and a sack. Helping contain Arvell Nelson, one of the league's most dangerous players. That'll be a huge loss for Philadelphia. We'll see if they go to Lonnie Outlaw or who they go to at the Jack spot. Might be Torres Jones who's backing him up. Jones also defensive back. Now at Jack, they had Darius Reynolds throughout the season. He played well. Now he's playing receiver again. I think maybe Lonnie, Lonnie Outlaw, you got to leave Jones out on the front side. So a first down for the soul in Radabaugh. High throw, but corralled by... E.J. Bunn, Kevin Homer on the stop. Bunn certainly electrified the Philadelphia audience throughout the year. He's out of UNC Pembroke in Greensboro, North Carolina. He trains with Ricky Prohl, former Carolina Panther and St. Louis Ram in the offseason. Don't forget, he was an Arizona Cardinal as well. Yes, he good, was. Very good player, Ricky Prohl was. B.J. Bunn is one of those guys that's going to get you the extra yards, the dirty yards, the tough yards. Came on late in the season and was having a tremendous effect on this offense once they got rolling because he was that guy that would go make the big play, tough catch for him. So a nine-yard game with Bunn in motion. And the inside handoff to Adrian Ferns, who led them in rushing and was a red zone threat with 12 touchdowns. He lugs it to the 17. Philadelphia is always brazen on offense. It's an aggressive mentality for Clint Dalzell. It is, but, but again, when I talked about Albany having multiple weapons, Philadelphia is the same way with Adrian Ferns. He's got 12 rushing TDs. Keith Newell at the tight end spot's got a few receptions and a touchdown. So he uses every available weapon to him on the offensive side. And the conservative dive for Ferns picks up the first down. As Philadelphia will send Reynolds flanked out wide to your top of your screen. And a deep drop by Radabaugh for the end zone and an interception. Here comes Albany bringing it out. It's Maurice Leggett in the open field, and he has a pick six. Touchdown, Albany. The roof may come off this place. This is really great help coverage here. And you see the, the, the separation in routes on this play were not deep enough. There's got to be more spacing, better spacing. And this is what causes this interception. And, and for Dan, if you don't like it in this situation, this game, when you got a chance to go up possibly 14-0 on a team on the road, throw it in the stand somewhere, make a new friend. But don't just guess in that situation, throw it up. Adrian Trevino was first team all arena league. He's 81 for 84 on extra points. And Albany ties it up. So Dan Radabaugh only intercepted eight times this year, but this one hurt. Maurice Leggett, 50 plus yards, a pick six, and the Empire strike first. I know I save money by bundling with USA. Home, auto, life insurance, anything we get, we get through USA. And they give us excellent customer service every time. I'll never leave USA because they care about us and they save us a lot of money. Bundle and save with USAA Insurance.
back in Albany where Maurice Liggett gets on the board with a 50 yard interception return for a touchdown and watch this coverage you've got a down guy in the flat right here it's telling you it's going to be some kind of zone he backs out to his area watch the two Philadelphia receivers outlaw goes vertical Prince gets pushed up the field just a little too far he's not able to get in Dan Rodabaugh's sight that causes the INT and then it's all, well, I used to play running back back in high school, so I know how to return it. Great return. <laughs> well, you got some dance moves in the open I, field. I'll tell you what, on. that was an excellent return, but a great job of playing coverage. Not only was it an excellent return, 54 yards is an arena bowl record for an interception return. Maurice Leggett spent some time a couple years ago with the Kansas City Chiefs, so with NFL experience. Jordan Williams takes it off the slack deck and gets hammered in the end zone by A.J. Coney. A special team standout from Akron. Philadelphia will be backed up in the shadows of its own end zone. Great to have you with us on ESPN2. Hope you've enjoyed Arena Bowl 32 thus far with Sed Bonner, Meredith Gorman, and J.J. Raderink. I'm John Mita Perel. And Dan Radabaugh led this team to five wins in their last six games and off to a pretty good start despite the 54-yard interception return. Now, they're playing well. They're doing some good things. You don't want to turn the ball ever, especially not in this place. When, when I played in this building, my, my job was to try and keep these guys quiet. It's very hard to do. You just have to go out and execute. Can't give them a reason to be excited in this building. Yeah, Transfinder Field has been kind. As Darius Reynolds with a quick hit. And Maurice Leggett on the stop. Reynolds came on in the postseason against Washington at nine catches, three touchdowns in two games. Well, this, this is what makes money special, Darius Reynolds. They call him money, Money Reynolds, because his, his physicality, ability to catch in traffic, ability to run with physicality down the field after he catches it, and the trust that he and Dan have on some of those quick throws that, that you're like, well, how did he even stick that in there? They've worked on him so much. There's a lot of trust and belief. After a nine-yard gain, Radaba for B.J. Bunn near sideline. Bunn carries it in for the score. Great 38 response. yards, B.J. Bunn. He's a rookie, but he plays like a veteran. Great response from Dan Radaba. The knock on him has been if he's gotten down on himself or, or made a mistake, kind of lets him multiply. But I tell you what, this is a great throw, a quick pump outside, like he's going to throw the quick. Defense settles their feet. Norrells. Wow. Another beautiful throw by Radabaugh. And Kenny Spencer tacks on the extra point. We have a feeling it might be a one possession type game and if the first quarter is any indication hold on to your hats it's going to be this type of ball game said bj bunn i am not just a possession receiver take that If I met another veteran and they were with another insurance company, I would tell them, you need to join USAA because they have better rates and better service. We are the Kirby family and we are USAA members for life. Get your USAA auto insurance quote today. Philadelphia with a 14-7 lead over Albany with 4.58 remaining in the first quarter. And we'll have our first NFL preseason game with John Gruden and the Raiders taking on Cliff Kingsbury's Cardinals Thursday, August 15th at 8 Eastern 5 Pacific on ESPN. ESPN Desportes and the ESPN app. Joe Tessitore and Booger McFarlane on the call with Lisa Salters on the field. Our coverage begins at 7 with a special edition of Monday Night Countdown. Kenny Spencer tees it up for Philadelphia with A.J. Coney off the net. Looking for an alley. And brought down at the nine. Tackle by Jameer Outsey, defensive lineman from UNLV. And let's go downstairs to the old quarterback, J.J. Roderick, with Dan Roderbaugh. Yeah, Dan, way to bounce back after that last possession there. Tell us about that last play there. Uh, you know, Reynolds is such a weapon that Anytime you get him out there, eyes are on him a lot. Bun did a good job faking uh, the, the now screen out there and ran by some uh, some low defenders. Great execution. Thank you very much, Sam. Thanks, sir. 
And JJ Dan Rodaba holds the record tied with the great Kurt Warner for the most completions in an arena ball arena ball 26 he had 31 completions set. That's getting it done. And Quentin Sims with his first catch of the night they go the short route Sims first team all arena from Tennessee Martin he was in the Patriots preseason camp in 2013 and a little bit different type of receiver than Malachi Jones. What are their differences. Okay. We got a new Jack linebacker in the game. New to this game, but Kent Richardson was the defensive back of the year in 2012 with this Philadelphia Soul team. Understands the game. Yeah, he was veteran. Cleveland across the middle, Malachi Jones. Carries into Philadelphia territory at the nine. You get it in the hands of Jones. It's good news. He averaged 15 yards per catch. He caught 96 balls for 1,440 yards. That's a 27 yard hit for Tommy Grady. This is a great read by Tommy Grady. He sees a too high vertical coverage. Defenders, he just waits for his dig route to come in his window and see the. You have the luxury to sit there and wait when you've got Cave, Ruffins, and Mudge as well as Michael Benson blocking for you. You've got that luxury to sit back, let it all develop, and see what's going on. Great throw and catch and read from Tommy Grady. Yeah, that wall for Albany blocks out the sun. Tommy Grady was only sacked twice this year. First down, Grady to the end zone for Sims, one-handed! Oh my goodness, he brought it down! Quentin Sims, an amazing grab! That was 11 yards, and he's got six. Albany one point away from tying it up. I mean, why would it be any different with Quentin Sims playing big boy football in the red zone? That's all he's done. Has five in the now six touchdowns in three games in the playoffs. Tell you what, his number per catch and touchdown ratio was off the charts. 59 catches, 29 touchdowns. But this is why, because he's a finisher, he goes Mariano Rivera in the red zone on all the DBs. Torres Jones was trailing him. Sims and Jones combining for 54 touchdowns. Trevino with the extra point. I love how you go Mariano Rivera. This capital region loves their Yankees. I mean, he is a closer, man. He is absolutely a closer. Coverage in decent position, but once he gets that edge and Tommy drops it in a great spot, can't say enough about his touch on that ball. You might have to go to a roll this Chapman bow to bring us up to 2019. Meredith Gorman is downstairs with Quentin Sims. Thanks, John. Quentin, heck of a one-handed catch right there. What'd you see on that play? Uh, I mean, he manned me up. Uh, he held me coming out of the break, but you got to fight through. It's the arena bowl. You got to make plays. Now, this is the first time the Arena Bowl has played in Albany in 20 years. What do you think of this crowd right now? It's pretty packed in here. Albany's great, man. That's why I came here to play. We're gonna, uh, they deserve a championship. We're going to try and give it to them. Thanks, Quentin. Thank you. John? Yeah, Meredith, no better fan support than Albany. 20 years ago, I was in, played them in the semifinal game in this building. Their offense was so good, they went 11 for 11 on possessions. Whoa. Okay, they scored at will on us. We went like seven for 10 and thought we were doing something and got smoked in this building and the crowd was crazy and we went back to Arizona with our tail between well, I, I call that game the matchup of two of the greatest quarterbacks in AFL history. Well, Mike Pulaski was legit. That guy could throw it out of Cal Berkeley. He was, if he would have played longer, he actually probably hold a lot of these records. Seth Bonner was not legit all. too though. Mike Pulaski Jordan Williams was brings really it out good. to the 15. Said in the Arena Bowl, you had your share of success rattling Orlando in the Arena Bowl, and you were throwing darts in 1994. Wow. Calvin Schexnader, Cedric Tillman, the original Arizona Rattler right there. That was a great feeling. 13-point underdogs on the road in Orlando. Took it away from them. Loved every minute of that. That's what Philly, Philly is trying to do here. Minus 10, 10-point 10 dogs in this game. They're trying to get it done. What a resume, Hall of Famer. Do you sign your autograph, HOF? No, nope, I do in baseball. It. I just sign it, unless people ask me to. I just sign it. So humble. Dan Rodabon, deep. 
And good coverage by Tevin Homer. Going for the money ball and Darius Prince, who already caught a touchdown, but Homer was there stride for stride. What did he do? He well? was. Well, I, th I, I think the ball's in the wrong place. See how Prince has to get vertical. Prince has to go back vertical. If Dan can lay that out in front, and I think right there, you see Joe Sykes with the tap on the shoulder. Gave him just a little nudge right yep. before he let it go. If you look at Prince's body as he's running, he's trying to climb back uphill to get that ball. If he can run out to the corner, that's probably a touchdown there. I love the aggressiveness of Clint Dalzell against the combative Albany defense. I, I tell you, Fritz has been devastating in the playoffs. Joe Sykes, we all know about Joe Sykes. And Brantley has been excellent. Darius Reynolds past midfield carries for a first down as Cheatham Norrells makes the hit. And there's the shot I'm talking about. That little trust throw where you get it out to him. It's like a quick or a hot read. Defenders off, giving lots of space. You want to put it on his hands and let him run and, and get tough yardage with it. Money Reynolds can do that. So the soul in business as we end the first quarter in Arena Bowl 32. Joe Sykes, he'll bring the heat throughout the game for Albany. And Dwayne Hollis entrusted with stopping the high-powered Albany attack. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Philadelphia in the Arena Bowl. It's been a storied history. Our own Matt DeRazio, the 2008 MVP, as they defeated San Jose. And then Dan Radabaugh, 2016. Who could forget the six touchdowns as they defeat Arizona? Just two years ago, Darius Prince was the MVP. They defeat Tampa Bay in a thriller. We were there set 44-40. Clint Dolzell coming off another Coach of the Year honor. And uh, Matt Tarazio is going to be joining us at halftime at ESPN Studios with Kevin Connors, the pride of Ithaca College. And Dolzell, you talked to him yesterday at the award ceremony. He says, you know, we're just happy to be here. It was kind of a year where they had to find their identity, and they did it late. They, they did. And I, like I said, I thought B.J. Bunn was a, a huge catalyst in, in helping with that. Getting the offense going in and late in the season in the playoffs to bring Money Reynolds back on offense. Looks like the old soul. Dan Rodabaugh targeting the end zone for Prince, but he can't bring it down as Cheatham Norrells had sticky coverage on Darius Prince. That's really good coverage. You know, look at the stats this far. Philly's going about it through the air, doing some good things. One turnover each, so they've nullified each other. We're right on pace where we should be as far as possessions. Philly's got to keep on the gas. You can't afford to allow this Empire team to run out on you, get in front of you, because then this place becomes a beehive, and it's over. What do you make of the Albany defense in the first quarter? I think they're playing well. They've had a couple missed assignments being a little too aggressive and, and not really staying with their techniques, but other than that, they're playing well. Reynolds is the target this time, and it's incomplete as he tried to cross on Cheatham Norrells, and J.J. Roderick has an injury update on Tyrell Robinson of the soul. Yeah, guys, I just got word that Tyrell Robinson had a left ankle injury, and he will be out for the remainder of the game. That's, that's too bad. He's a young man that we talked about coming in the playoffs and has really dominated that jack position with athleticism being 6'4", 225, or 240 and can run, can jump, causes problems for offense when you have somebody at that jack linebacker spot like Terrell Robinson that can create hectic plays for you on the defensive side. It's a third and ten for the soul. And that was miscommunication with Darius Prince. Radabaugh threw it, but Prince wasn't waiting for it. Those guys are usually on the same page. They are. Is going through its third down and ten, and Dan's like, "Well, let's get more than half of it." And you got to be aware at all time. If there's ever an alert hot on, you have to be aware. Take a glance at your QB. They're fortunate that didn't bounce off the wall and get picked off by Legato. Le 
Liggett over there on the right side. It would have been his second of the game. Yeah, keep in mind, it's live off the wall. That's Arena Football 101 as well with no punting. Punting is prohibited. It's definitely frowned upon. <laughs> <laughs> if you tried it, it definitely would be frowned upon. Drop kicking is legal. Yes, it is. Oh. Remember the last drop kick extra point in the NFL? Sit on that one. Okay. Fourth down and ten. Rodabaugh. And a drop at the wall. So a win for the Albany defense as Lonnie Elwa could not engulf it. Philadelphia stifled this destructive Albany defense. Gets a win, and they'll take over coming up in the second quarter. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. Okay, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Play free fantasy AFL on DraftKings for your share of real cash prizes. Go to arenafootball.com, click on the DraftKings banner, and download the app now. Use promo code ARENA when you sign up and play free today. Right, we appreciate their support all season. Folks at DraftKings... Always an entertaining game for arena football fans. And said Bonner, I know you've had a lot of success as the Albany fans are dancing in the aisles. And there's one of them. They are certainly enthusiastic. He's making me tired. That's a workout as Grady takes the five-step drop. And Malachi Jones is the beneficiary at the barrier. Stopped by Dwayne Hollis. And speaking of Malachi Jones. Broadcast team, part of the DraftKings game, and Malachi, a pick of Meredith and JJ, must be that sideline synergy. They have Malachi, you go with DJ Stevens. I like that pick, that's kind of off the board a little it bit. Is. I, I'm not gonna go, you guys went safe. You guys went safe, literally. Now you want your blankets, you got the safe guys. How do you feel about it? Come yeah, on. Well, I went for the chalk. Come on. Quentin Sims, I mean, that's really not that difficult. That's safe. It is safe. It's safe. Call me John Safety Meter Perel as Malachi Jones takes it. Good open field tackle there by James Romain. Because that guy is tough to bring down in space. So good with the ball in his hands. They get the quick screen out to him. Try to get him in the zone, but really good job by Les Moss, the offense coordinator. Him and Tommy have such a great relationship that goes back to Jacksonville. This will is their second chance in an arena bowl. Lost to San Jose back in 2015, and they've been great offensively, and it's just continued to build and grow with these receivers they have. Second and goal, and inside, Albany, touchdown. There's the guy, Quentin Sims. There's some draft king points for Quentin Sims. Seven yards, his second touchdown of the game, and Albany grabs the lead. a really good play call it's just a quick quick screen look at the other guys out front blocking beautiful job and he extends just gets it over the line by a fraction of an inch however since he's your player <laughs> I'm not gonna make a big deal about challenge that how dare you <laughs> I spoke to him before the game I said Quentin just get me a few okay I need some bragging rights on said Bonner I'm certainly not going to beat set on the golf course. Maybe I could beat him in the DraftKings game, but Adrian Trevino tacks on the extra point. He's perfect. If you want to get a you want to get a championship ring, all players have to be engaged on every play. And look at the blocking out in front. DJ Stevens in the game. And then the effort to get it in the end zone. Quentin Sims doing what he does.
Discover card. Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. Okay, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Albany leading Philadelphia 21 to 14 with 9.59 remaining in the first half. And tomorrow on ESPN at 6 Eastern, 3 Pacific, we'll kick off our fourth annual fantasy football marathon with 28 straight hours of coverage. All the fantasy insight to get you ready for your season. Coverage will also be on ESPN2 and is always streaming live on the ESPN app. I can't wait for fantasy football. My draft's coming up. You fantasy football players set. Uh, I just get frustrated because I feel I feel like it should go a certain way. It never goes that way. <laughs> I got all my neighbors making fun of me, laughing at me. Can't have that. You don't want to be laughing. I can't have that. Jordan Williams dancing in the end zone, and he takes the easy route. He doesn't want any part of Albany special teamers DJ Stevens and Jeremy Richardson. And Meredith Gorman is on the sidelines with Tommy Grady coming off that touchdown pass. Tommy, two touchdowns on those last two offensive drives. Both of those to Quentin Sims. What do we see there? Quentin just finds a way to get in the end zone. Uh, the, first, the first one we had Poco on, he had posted a corner and went corner. Threw up there, threw up there for him and made a great catch. Now every single week you find a different wide receiver in the end zone. It seems like how is the chemistry on offense progressed to this point here in Arena Bowl? We got a lot of unselfish guys on our team, so we should keep on playing that. We got a good chance. Thanks, Tommy. Thank you. you guys. All right, Meredith, that's the two-time AFL MVP, Tommy Grady, from the University of Utah. Only two-time back-to-back winner in AFL history. Great award ceremony yesterday here at Transfinder Field. As the players were saluted on both squads and all the award honorees were here. And B.J. Bunn almost took it to the house, but he hit the barrier first, and that means... I, I, I mean, if you... Really look at it. You're does out. He, does he? It does. He he clipped the barrier, like by a fraction. But that shows you the kind of strength in his lower half. When the guy runs with the ball, he runs with power and strength. And to me, I love it when this kid's on the field because he makes all the right plays and, and does all the right things and has the ability to make big plays for you without it being a special play for him. You want him to get the ball more. Oh, absolutely. But but that that is dictated by the defense. He's the underneath guy, the guy that's going to take coverage and, and be on the wall where he's supposed to be, like that. But look how strong he is. I mean, I mean he is strong. Oh, yeah. To elude the grasp almost of Tevin Homer, you have to be. Bunn is 5'11", 210 pounds, but has great short route speed as well. J.J. Roderick is on the field with Clint Dalzell. We're, they're make, They're going to make sure that they get this one right here. We were going to ask him, but I think they're going into here. All right, J.J., stand by. Radabaugh to Prince. A first down and more as he gets blasted at the wall by Tevin Homer, but a dart by Dan Radabaugh. They call him the Red Rocket with the red hair. And not so much hair on the dome not now. So, not so much. When he first started, we started, first started calling that, he had red hair. But as it started, you know, going by way of the sunset, oh, he let it go. It's okay like, to be like most of us. Challenged, yeah, right? like most of us. I had to let it go. I had to make a decision to go from a convertible to just a all the way off, you know. Radabaugh replaced Ben Roethlisberger of Miami of Ohio and Roethlisberger left him into the NFL. And a quick hit this time. Well done. So they could have held him up to keep him from getting that first down. Darius Prince again, who's feasting on this Albany secondary, which had 14 interceptions this year. Well, Leggett, and as well as Terrence Moore, both trying to strip that ball. He's able to fall forward and get a few more yards and get the first down. 
This is the area of the field where they like to go read in the middle. And that's going to be somewhere inside. They'll give a player a two-way goal. He'll either come inside and cross face on the defender, or he'll settle down in the hole. Instead, he goes to Prince at the four. Some extracurriculars with Tiller after the play. Aaron Tiller, a rookie who's flashed for the Empire defense. Philadelphia outstanding in the red zone at 88%. They led the league. Albany defense, 65%. Holding teams back led the AFL. Terrence Moore, one of the best linebackers in the league, but Albany also with a key injury to Terrence Smith. He's out. Yeah, well, that's their size guy, but again, You've got these young athletic DBs back there that, that you have a chance to play, and these guys are getting better each time out and more confident. Outlaws in motion. Radabaugh's looking that way. Instead, he goes to Prince for the touchdown. So this is a what looks like a pick play, but if you watch all the DBs, it looks like a pick, and he just finds the swing route all the way in the back of the end zone. But look at the DBs, and, and you see Reynolds trying to get off of his man, and the DBs trying to hold him up, and no one got out. So that's a little miscommunication on the defense. Great adjustment and way to see it from Dan Rodabaugh. Yeah, Leggett was lagging in coverage along with Tevin Homer. Kenny Spencer to tie it up. And Philadelphia is back in business. We got a ball game in Arena Bowl 32. Absolutely, after getting shut down on fourth down. And come on, we were just the champs back to back two years ago. We're not going anywhere. We're going to be here for the rest of the evening, folks. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. Okay, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fee or blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Kevin Connors, Matt DeRazio coming up on the Halftime Report. We'll break down the first half, get the thoughts on the quarterback play from a guy who played the position, won a couple of Arena Bowl MVPs as well. Two best teams in the league. About what we thought in this first half. Yeah, I mean, you go to bed thinking the night before I wanted to play my best game, and we've seen a lot of fireworks so far uh, this first half, 21-21. We'll see how this thing uh, ends up here at the end of the half. We're also going to break down and let you know the award winners from this past season. Faster than a Rogan's delivery, we head back to Albany. John Mita Perel. Thanks very much, Kevin Connors and Matt DeRazio. Philadelphia and Albany tied at 21. This large crowd entertaining. You know, Kevin Connors is a star now at ESPN set, but I know him better as a former star in the hardwood for the Ithaca College basketball team. This guy was a D3 star. Trust me. And the ball is loose. Opportunistic Philadelphia diving for the loose ball. Philadelphia ball. Dicey maneuvers by Albany on special teams, and Chandler watch, comes watch, up with it. Watch number two, Kent Richardson, in the center of your screen. Boom! With the hit on Colin Taylor. Looked a little bit like that ball may have clipped him. Yeah. And also, prior to 10. If you're new to arena football, you know, said it's a possession game. Number Absolutely. of possessions Fine. is ultra important. Find ways to get them. Find ways to get them. And the onside kick is always a weapon. It is. It is. If you've got a guy that's got multiple onside kicks, you give yourself a chance. These two kickers both have good opportunities. I think these two guys, Trevino as well as Spencer, along with the great Mark Lewis, are the best. Good throw again by Radabaugh. He's now one out. Balls out. shy, but here comes it's Fumble. Albany with the football. Maurice Leggett takes it from Darius Prince. Radabaugh's a completion shy from breaking the all-time arena record in his career. But there's a 
miscue by Prince and a hold against Philadelphia. Results for the play is a fumble recovered by Albany, first down. So, so much for the opportunistic soul, and Albany comes right back at him. This, this is a great punch out. And you're going to have to make plays, but you get in space, good throw and catch. You turn back inside, you know people are coming. Right there, Terrence Moore, last year's Defensive Player of the Year, with a punch right there with the right hand. Number eight, Terrence Moore. Been doing it for a long time. One of the best to ever do it at the Jack linebacker spot. Huge turnover. Yeah, in his eighth year from Troy. Had six interceptions last season, four this year. Grady, a wide open Quentin Sims. In the open field, oh, and he has off. another touchdown. Oh, he just posterized him. Oh. 25 yards, said Bonner, and that was special. Uh, uh, it's going to be so special. People are going to talk about this stiff arm for a while. Talk about him playing big boy football, but you're playing zone, and there's so much space. These guys are too dangerous with the ball in their hands to give up that much space. But once he starts running, he picks up a couple blocks, and right here, oh, don't do it to him. He gets Dwayne <laughs> Hollis with the stiff arm. And as he's doing it, I, I, I thought I heard him say it. How about three touchdowns already for Quentin Sims? Could have sworn I heard him saying weight room as he was doing that. I think he I was. Mean, weight room. He was definitely thinking it if he oh. didn't say it. Oh. That's called a win for the strength and conditioning coach. As Ryan Cave is down for Albany, and this will be a huge loss for them. He is the offensive lineman of the year and he anchors their offensive line at center as he gets up slowly to the explosive from Quentin Sims I mean just just giving up too much space and, and not taking anything away too many guys downfield and Quentin Sims these guys are too dangerous with the ball in their hands to be running. This is rather unlike Philly. They play a little more man than most teams. Quentin Sims has been superb and just roaming free. Tommy Grady giving time. He's tough to stop. He's very tough to stop. And Sims, you see just the tough, toughness, the physicality. And here you see the athleticism. And then the brutal finish, that's demoralizing right there. That's what he's been doing. Did you ever post for oh. someone, someone like that? What, what, back in my basketball days. Oh, I bet not, you not did. Football. Yeah. I, I got posterized by football. <laughs> and that combination, part of our open as we started the broadcast, with good reason, eight combined catches to over 100 yards, and Sims with the three touchdowns. Malachi Jones has been an afterthought despite 72 yards. Jones, the... Offensive player of the year from Appalachian State. Got a look last year with the Chicago Bears, spent some time with them. And the Bears coach is a guy you know well, former Arena League. Great player, Matt player. Hayden. Good player, a, a better guy, and, and the job he's done. I'll tell you what, the Bears will be formidable. They'll be exciting because that's just the brand of football he knows. Now an onside kick attempt for Trevino. Oh, that was oh spectacular. God, Moore. What a play. Terrence Moore. Unbelievable. Stop it. Stop it. Rob Keefe, you deserve to celebrate. I know Rob shouldn't be celebrating. <laughs> Watch Terrence Moore on this play, people. Watch number eight elevate and posterize. Rob, can you posterize somebody when you're getting an onside kick? Watch number eight go up. Watch number eight, he sees it, he times it up, he gets hit, but it still is able to concentrate and catch it. How did he come down with it? Oh my, I mean, he gets low, undercut, and still comes down with the ball. Terrence okay. Moore, Troy State, come on now. I don't know if there's ever been a sports center top 10 on an outside that, kick. But come on. But that deserves some Come on, credit. timed it up perfectly. The elevation was outstanding, and the concentration was outstanding. It was. And another possession for Albany. The gambler, Rob Keefe, 
part of this coaching staff, which won 10 regular season games. They won 10 out of 12. They're a six and one at Transfinder Field and the Times Union Center. Brady for Jones, and there's a souvenir for a fan. If you throw the football in the stands, you take it home good. in arena football. This is really good coverage. And let's go downstairs to Meredith Gorman with the man of the hour, Terrence Moore. Thanks, guys. Terrence, after that onside kick, you came down with that ball. What was going through your mind as you made that dive? Just get it. Just get the ball. It's simple. Coach drew it up, and he trusted in me to go get the ball. And I had to execute what I was asked to do. Thanks, Terrence. So, guys. Timo, come on, man. Stop it. That was ridiculous, though. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. I mean, because I would have let the ball go and been, like, trying to find a way to put my hands down to save myself. Yeah, think about somehow. the sacrifice on your body. Like, man. Your body's a shrine, so. Grady, the deep drop. It's broken up by James Romain, intended for Sims, but a flag. I think they're gonna get Stevenson out of the box, but he's not out of the box when the ball's thrown. Illegal defense. Number two was out of the box. Five-yard penalty. That is an automatic first down. They got Kent Richardson who's replaced the injured Tyrell Robinson. Really good coverage. Robinson, the Jack linebacker, out earlier with an injury. He will not return. So Kent Richardson, who they just signed a few days ago off the street, is playing Jack linebacker. Well, he's but he knows the game. He, he knows the game. Does with that experience with Cleveland, who's no longer in the league. Michael Benson, the Belenic Benson towards midfield. Bam, 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 Benson. He's athletic. You know, he played baseball in Florida AM and is along with football. He's 295 pounds. But, but his feet, his feet though, that's that's all I'm, I'm gonna leave with that. His feet though. Like he's got great feet, great vision. He's a, he's a back, he's a running back. He yeah. understands just because he's that big. I think what's Improved with him and, and the way he's gotten better over the last four or five years is his protection inside because he's gotten really good at stoning people. Another good throw by Grady to Stevens who gets corralled, but more positive yards for the Empire. Dwayne Hollis combining in coverage with Torres Jones. Of course, your guy just catches and falls into the end zone, and my guy gets tackled before he can get a touchdown. Again, he finds the backside route. Good job of uncovering by Stevens. He has the wall route, so the, the Jack linebacker comes towards him. He wraps around and finds space. Good recognition and execution. James Romaine's been talking a lot of smack throughout the game. And that's what he does, though, right? Man, He's he, energetic. He, he is feisty. He's feisty. Defensive player of the year, but it, it works for him. He's part of this destructive Philadelphia defense. He had eight interceptions. He had three return for touchdowns, and he was all over the place. A, a ubiquitous presence in that secondary as Clint Dalzell stops the side on a timeout for Albany. Take us through the last 29 seconds. Well, if you're you're Albany, you want you get the ball coming out, so you want to run it maybe. I don't know if you want to score too quick and give Philly a chance to get, get points on the board. Well, they'll take it there. Touchdown, Albany. Quentin Sims has been uncoverable. His fourth touchdown of the half. And ninth in the playoffs. Nine touchdowns in the playoffs. He still has another half to go. An 11-yard touchdown pass by the league MVP, Tommy Grady. It's pitch and catch all over the place for the Empire. Well, those first two plays, you get stops, and then all of a sudden you shoot yourself in the foot with a... A mistake defensively with the jack out of the box. So then there's no pressure. They're able to go out and execute, and they do just that right down the field. And Quentin Sims, man, I mean, what can you say about this guy? All he does is catch touchdowns. Come on. What a target at 6'3, 205 from Tennessee Martin. Trevino has been perfect on extra points. And a two touchdown lead for the Empire. And another look at the touchdown, a beautiful throw by Tommy Grady. Another chance for him to just stand tall and get on top of the throw. Still can't give enough credit to this offensive line. The way they grind it out, Mo Ruffins, Ryan Cave, Jordan Mudge, along with Michael Benson. 
Grady, who doesn't need help looking special, but they help him look extremely special. ESPN Fantasy Football is back, and with the season right around the corner, start your league now at ESPN.com slash fantasy football. An entertaining first half in the capital region of New York with Seth Bonner. I'm John Mita Perel. Don't forget our halftime show coming up with Kevin Connors and two-time AFL MVP Matt DeRazio. They'll take you through all the highlights of the first half. Matt, Matt's probably the most underrated QB in, in the history of this league. I would agree. I and mean, he was un, probably one of the most unselfish dudes as well. But a guy that was just a gamer, man. Threw a great deep ball. He competed. Fantastic play. He's the guy you want in the closing seconds with the ball in his hand because you know good sure. things will happen. For sure. And he loved to play. He loved to do it. Bar ball taken nicely by Williams, but he gets planted at the one. Aaron Tiller. They're feeding off this momentum at Transfinder Field. Albany has been that type of team all year. Said a surge of momentum and, and, and since that's game what it one. Is. Talked about Philly not letting them get out because the more they get out, this place is going to just get into a fever pitch and it's just going to keep going and keep going. You got to keep pace. Not to let them get too far in ahead of you. You can't hear. It's going to be loud. So Philly's got a, a large hill to climb here. And coming out, you got to be careful with your quicks here because you've got guys on the edge that are extremely smart. And what I mean by quick is your quick throws, getting the ball out. You're going to see Rodney Fritz, probably Joe Sykes, getting their hands up in throwing lanes on the edges to try to take away the short passes. Darius Reynolds in motion, gets the ball. He's tough in space and upended past the 20. Seven homer there, six oh, seconds off the clock. And that's a new record for Dan Radabaugh's 111th Arena Bowl completion. He passes the great Nick Davila as the all-time leader. Congratulations to Dan. Absolutely. Great job. And he chased Nick Davila for years. He did. Lost a couple of arena bowls to, to Nick, who was, I mean, this era, he's the best I've seen. Gutsy, feisty player. And then finally got him in Arizona when Arizona was going for their fourth straight. And you're on that list as well, Seth. Different era, man. I don't know if you have any throws left. I've got plenty. Well, they gave you a ball before the game. I think you're warming up, aren't you? I, I, I'm always ready. I've got at least two or three. Yeah, you and J.J. Roderick were throwing in the halls. Well, these these new footballs, I don't know if you've, if any, if you've held them, anyone out there, they're special. They feel great. Great. The difference is, if I hold it, it doesn't go anywhere. If you hold it, it goes 40 yards. Radabaugh, maybe the last play of the half. B.J. Bunn. And Moore is there. And that will do it for Philadelphia. An explosive second quarter for the Albany Empire, the top seed in the AFL postseason for a reason, as they dominated the second quarter. And they take the two touchdown lead into the locker room. And Rob Keefe's no doubt very happy about it. Meredith Corman has him on the field. Thanks, guys. Coach, your team's been able to execute in all three phases of the game and capitalize on scoring opportunities on defense and offense. What's impressed you so far? I think what I'm most proud about is the passion and the energy that we're playing with. They're capturing the moment. One of the biggest things is anytime we had uh, to battle through adversity, we conquered that feat. Uh, we fumbled it, but we got an interception right back. We got an onside kick kicked on us, and we got a fumble recovery right back. That's how you handle adversity. It's, it's, a, it's a metaphor for life. Two quarters left to play until the Arena Bowl championship's over with. What are you going to tell the guys in the locker room? You play to win. You don't play not to lose. You play to win. You don't play not to lose. We got the ball back first in the second half. We got to score. We got to continue this momentum and not look back. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Guys. All right, Meredith. Thank you, Rob. Keefe always has him jacked and pumped. He's the Pete Carroll of AFL football. Dan Radabaugh started well, hitting the fresh prince of Philadelphia, but then Maurice Leggett brought it back. Kevin Connors and Matt DeRazio take it away at halftime. All right, John Mita Perel, thanks so much, and welcome into. To win a championship, it takes an empire. No, no, no. To win a championship, it takes soul. This season, it's all about unfinished business. In Philadelphia, it's about ring number four. 
Now it's time to finish what we started. Now it's time to get serious. First, now. Get your popcorn ready. It's going to be a show. Now sit back and relax, because Arena Bowl 32 is next. Two at the Times Union Center. It's been a rock em sock em first half with plenty of offense. Albany leading Philadelphia 35 to 21. And welcome back, everybody, with the AFL Hall of Famer, Seth Bonner. I'm Jami DeFerro. It's great to have you with us. Clint Dolzell, tough second quarter for him. Meredith Gorman has him downstairs. Thanks, John. Coach, down 14 after two quarters of play. What adjustments will we see in the second half? Well, we got to get some stops, obviously. They get the ball coming out. We got to make sure. You Get stopped somewhere. Cut it to one possession. We've got to score every time on offense. Far from over. Thanks so much. You bet. Guys. All right, thank you, Meredith. And said if you're inside that Philadelphia locker room, as Albany scored on three possessions, three plays, 27 yards, one play, 25 yards, four plays, 39 yards, where are you going on defense? Well, I don't think I, I can't really talk about the defense. I'm talking about I'm with my offense right now saying, listen, stop shooting yourself. Stop stop giving the ball away. Stop turning it over on downs. You talk about a turnover on downs, a fumble. I mean, you can't do those things, especially in this building with these fans, with this explosive offense. Just take care of the possessions that you get. Take care of them. Put points on the board. Try to climb back in one possession at a time. But number one, you've got to get more physical and aggressive with these Albany receivers. A.J. Coney looking for an alley off the net and hit at the wall. Jordan Williams makes the stop. Our first half stats. Good half for Dan Rodabaugh, now the all-time completion leader in Arena Bowl history. But 151 yards, productive yards for the Empire. This is a team that averaged 65 points per game in their last three outings. Time of possession in favor of Philadelphia, but the scoreboard, all Albany. And after deferring and winning the toss, so they chose to get the ball first in the second half a good decision for Tommy Grady and company he was efficient again the reigning league MVP Malachi Jones relatively quiet in the first half with the hit from Grady at the 22 and James Romain on the stop well when you look at the playoffs he's been relatively quiet in the playoffs and it's because they're zoning up to him taking him away but again again as you get a look at the numbers, why they've been so good. 10 and 2 in the regular season, 14, or excuse me, 12 and 2 overall, and they've been awesome on offense and getting better each week, putting up 60 spots back to back in the playoffs leading into this Arena Bowl 32 matchup. Quentin Sims, four touchdowns in the first half. He's in motion. Grady targets him. Sims inside the 10 and dropped by Dwayne Hollis. It's just simply unstoppable. Well, when, I'm telling you, I've never seen Philadelphia play this much zone. And if you're, you're going to play zone and you can't get to Tommy Grady, this is what happens. Look at all the space he has. They run a sky coverage. He sits down in the middle of the coverage, and it's just too easy. And we're talking about a veteran group of defenders that understand how to play man and can play man. They've got to come up and take some chances. They've got to play some man-to-man, -man, try to throw Tommy Grady off of his rhythm. But right now, they're allowing him to sit back. They can't get pressure. He's sitting back there just dissecting this defense. Maybe the injury to Tyrell Robinson, their Jack linebacker playing a role. And there's flags as Albany could not get the playoff. Offense, five-yard penalty, and that, that's, first down. That's OK. There's nothing wrong with that. If you're Albany, don't don't just snap it just to snap it and run a play. They've got plenty of time, plenty of space. Still first down. You're okay. That's not a end all penalty right there. That's why you see Tommy just walk away and let the play clock run out. But now at the Jack linebacker spot, Darius Reynolds is back in on the defensive side of the ball. Yeah, Reynolds was productive there throughout the season, shifting over from receiver. Another deep drop by Grady and a drop by Malachi Jones, but good coverage by Dwayne Hollis. Hollis is second team all arena defensive back. Malachi Jones trying to get more involved early. He is, and, and 
really hasn't hasn't been a instrumental as he has during the regular season in the playoffs. But you see the great coverage by Hollis there. He battles his way through that crossing route. Malachi came into this championship with just three receptions in the playoffs for 52 yards. After what he did during the season. Well, they didn't need him much because no. they blew out Baltimore in two games. They scored over 120 points as Quentin That's Sims in a short game. So Albany slowing down inside the red zone set. And why not? As long as you put points on the board, you're burning, burning clock. You're not trying not to score. You're just running your offense. There's no reason to be in a hurry. You're going to score if it presents itself. I mean, these guys, man, Quentin Sims, nine touchdowns in the playoffs. Nine. Including four tonight. And how about 38 this season? <laughs> 29 during the regular season. Jones in motion on third and goal with a pass rush. Michael Benson. Oh, he's in the end zone. That's 295 pounds. All wrapped up in the touchdown. An eight-yard score. This right here is one of those calls where you know a team is trying to get to you. They're, they've got to get pressure. They've got to find a way to slow you down to try to get home. So they're coming with their ears spin back, trying to get back. Great disguise. Great sell by Benson and that offensive line. Can't give enough credit to those guys. How about scoring on your last six possessions? That's Arena Football 101. That's excellent, excellent job. And Listen, the guy that nobody ever talks about is Les Moss and the job he's done with his play calling is spectacular. You set up the fullback screen. Oops, he gives him the slip. And look at the big boys out in front. And that is just too easy. Bam Bam Benson in for seven. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. And welcome back to Trends Finder Field at the Times Union Center in Albany, New York. Great to have you with us on ESPN2 as Albany has been rolling. Number one seed in the AFL playoffs coming off two blowout wins over Baltimore. And Michael Benson celebrating the touchdown moments ago an eight yard catch from Tommy Grady and Adrian Trevino will tee it up for the go from the goal line for the Empire AFL kicker of the year Jordan Williams waiting and he'll take it off the net nice move out to the Philadelphia gets it back as B.J. Bunn was the man on the spent spot, diving for it with Maurice Leggett. Joining us on the field now is one of the ubiquitous presidents around arena football, Ron Jaworski, the CEO of the Philadelphia franchise, also part of the Albany franchise as well. So, Josh, you can't lose tonight. You must be feeling pretty, pretty good down there. Well, the AFL is the winner tonight. It's been a great football game. Albany playing tremendous football. They're a well-coached team, much like the Philadelphia Soul. Uh, this crowd here in Albany, I mean, it is so loud. I, get, I need earmuffs. It's great. Just love it here in Albany. Tremendous atmosphere, Jaws. And you know what? They're loving life because their team is up by 21 points as Dan Rodaba ushers Philadelphia to the line of scrimmage and finds B.J. Bunn down the alley. To the 25 yard line, but Albany's been so impressive offensively all year, Josh. Tommy Grady, the league MVP, and you must be, as a quarterback mentor, must be very impressed with his play. Well, Tommy obviously has a great arm. He's got outstanding receivers and one heck of an offensive line. You know, those are key ingredients for success, and Tommy's having that success. But we all know in arena football, the game ain't over until the clock says 0 0. Absolutely, Jaws, and 
what are some of the things that you're seeing from this uh, Philadelphia defense that you think they need to clean up to try and get a hold of this Empire offense? Said we're going to have a little bit more aggressive on the defense side in our man-to-man -man coverage. We're playing that deep zone, allowing Tom to get that check down. He's got outstanding receivers that get those yaks, those yards after the catch. So we need to get pressure on Tom Brady. It's like any other game of football. You need to pressure the quarterback. The soul are not doing that in this matchup right now. Absolutely. I'm super excited, Jaws, to be back here in Albany. I played here 20 years ago in a semifinal game, and these people, I mean, this region is in love with this game, and they've embraced it, and it's a special kind of place. Talk about that moving forward with the kind of places you want to take this league. Well, you know, three years ago, we started looking to expand the arena of football. We came up here at Albany because of their great history and tra their tradition, their 1999 Arena Bowl championship. So we thought this would be a great market. Ownership group up here with George Hurst and Dan Nolan and Ed Swire have been phenomenal. Well-coached team here. The, 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 the community of Albany has really embraced the Arena Football League. And, and you guys have been around for a long time. The Arena Football League is ascending right now. We have teams now calling us about franchise. So we're excited about the future of the Arena Football League. If anyone watching this game, I can see what a high-scoring, fast-paced action game this is. And the crowd is absolutely into this game. That's what Arena Football is all about. Yeah, Josh, that's well said. You called this a tipping point game for the AFL yesterday at the awards ceremony. What do you mean by that? Well, I was hoping that this would be one of those games like uh, you know, the Giants-Colts game back in the 50s that really you know, brought the NFL to prominence. You need one of those TV games where everyone goes, wow, that was a really great game. We love football. We love the NFL. We love the AFL. And right now we're getting that kind of game. But the Soul are going to have to respond and get back in this ball game and take down the last play. That's what we want in this game. Right, it's looking good now despite the injury moments ago to Darius Reynolds and incomplete. Radabaugh going for it all as Lonnie Outlaw came up limping. Good effort by Outlaw going over the wall. Keep in mind, you go over the wall, you bring the ball down. It's a catch. We've seen him make these type of catches, and when you're down in this building, this is the play you have to make. That's a great throw from Dan, but you see his leg get caught up in the boards a little bit. Comes up hobbling. Jaws, that's part of the pulsating action around the AFL. The Wolves always win, but these guys are ferocious. You play with many great players in your, your career. The athleticism out there tonight is well, superb. There, there, there's no question. I just love the talentless league. I've been involved in the AFL for 15 years right now, and our talent is better and better every single year. You're going to see guys on this field behind me right now playing in the NFL, you know, playing in the XFL, playing another brand of professional football because they've learned how to play the game here in the Arena Football League. Learn how to be professionals. That's so awesome. We've got some great coaches. I'm excited, Jaws. Every time I see your face, I smile. I get excited about what's to come for the Arena Football League. Thank you for spending some time with us. And I know it's killing you not watching that game. Yeah, come on, so I gotta turn, turn around. around Sandy. You know turn I love around football. And enjoy. I love arena football just like you, man. We're, <laughs> grow we're growing this thing in a big way. All right, Josh. Thanks very much. Enjoy the rest of the game. Thank you. Ron Jaworski tantalizing us with expansion talk, too. Hear about that coming up from the AFL, but third and one, and Outlaw capitalizes as he fights for the goal line. A good read by Dan Rod about to find him, and Jaws doesn't get you fired up. I don't know who will. I, I, I'm like, my hands are sweating right now because I love talking to Jaws about this league. Philly needed that conversion, and they're going to need this score, and then they've got to make some things happen on the defensive side. Lonnie Outlaw, who we saw limp, limp back to the hoe, was able to grind it out to get the first down there. Money Reynolds not playing offense right now because he's going on the defensive side. First and goal at the two for Adrian Ferns, their red zone threat, but he gets stifled by Terrence Moore. How about Moore trying to stand up Ferns. Ferns at 295 pounds. And watch Joe Sykes as well come from the backside and help clean it up. Talk about a guy finishing the play. Terrence Moore, it's been special. Watch Joe Sykes from the backside. Right here, helps clean it up, finishes down the line. He and Timo get it done, keeping Ferns out of the end zone. This is such an essential drive for Philadelphia. They must finish business. They have, have to put points on the board. Second and goal at the two, approaching the five and a half minute mark of the third quarter. Trans Finder Field and the crowd jacked up. And a quick hit to B.J. Bunn coming out of the backfield. He fights for the goal line, but Albany defense fit for the cause. 
Tell you what, he's got to get back inside here. Kind of cuts outside. Watch his path. He goes wide. If he cuts inside, then he's one on one with Norrells, and he is down. That's a great call. Great hit by Tevin Homer out on the edge, the league's leading tackler during the regular season. Homer, a rookie from Florida Atlantic, 85 stops. All arena first team. Third and goal at the one. Where are they going here? Are you going to Ferns? They have to. He gets it, but he's hit. And for a loss. The momentum of the Albany defense, it's been an empire surge. And this is what the surge is in this crowd right now. They're excited. They know how important a shutdown here is. And look, knifing through Jeremy Richardson, as well as the rest of that front. Jay Rich has been a guy that's been around, won a title with Philadelphia. But look at him hop over the top and is able to get him down. Terrence Moore as well. Great defensive stand. And we'll see, it all comes down to this. Simply your play of the game thus far for Philadelphia. Fourth and goal. Radabaugh, the old Oklahoma play, and he's hit for a loss. What a stop by Jeremy, Albany's Richardson. Jeremy Richardson. Man, oh man alive. A turnover on downs. This, this is one, if you're going to do this, you've got to have somebody working around the back of the end. He heads up. They don't blitz. Great defensive call. He stays in base. Does a great job of scraping down the line of scrimmage. Jeremy Richardson has been a champion. He's trying to get it back. Albany says no. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Welcome back to Albany. And we'll take a look at how they turned the soul back. Burns for no game. And look at the common theme. Team tackling guys around the ball. Look at Jay Rich, Terrence Moore around the ball. And again, they tried the okie doke with Dan Rodabaugh. And Jay Rich, Jeremy Richardson says, no, sir, you get no soup. <laughs> no soup for you. No soup for you. Jeremy Richardson, well, he'll be eating pretty well after this one if this one holds for Albany. They hope to celebrate their first AFL title in 20 years. That guy is one of the, the more... This guy is one of the better players in this league. I would start my franchise, and you see his mom there, Katrina. This guy is phenomenal because he could play nose guard, DM, Mac. He could play fullback, led the league in rushing a couple years yeah. ago. One of the most versatile men in this game. And when I talk about playing with your heart and playing like you truly love the game, this dude right here. I would step into any huddle with him, anywhere, anytime. Well, that's the genius of what Albany's done, putting this team together. Their mantra this year has been unfinished business. They were eliminated last year in the first round of the playoffs, stunned by Washington, who ended up winning Arena Bowl 31. And those are the type of players that Rob Keefe wanted on his team, linchpin-type guys that could play a lot of different positions, know the game. As Quentin Simmons, Sims goes down at the six and Meredith Gorman has Jeremy Richardson after his outstanding stop on fourth down. Jeremy, huge stop for this defense. You come up huge with the fourth down sack on Dan Radaba. Take me through the execution on that play. Well, you know, they had been trying to run it three times in a row. Uh, I didn't think that they had faked the Ferns getting really in, getting it in. Uh, so they, they, they faked it. I knew he wasn't trying to get it on my side. He was trying to play me because I've been there before. He thought I was going to be aggressive. But I seen the handoff not go in, so I, I immediately attacked there. And it's worth noting, you know, you're playing against your former team. You previously won an arena bowl with Philadelphia. What's it like being on this side of the team? Hey, you know what? It's a blessing. A lot of these guys that are on this roster, I played with before I ever got to Philadelphia. When I first came into this league, 
Dozell was a coach that coached me before, but he didn't give me the opportunity to play with them. So you know what? I'll play with a lot of guys that are here. I'm blessed too. I'm thankful. I'm here playing for my grandmother who's in the hospital, who I love her so much. Thank you for everything, man. Jehovah God is so good to me. And speaking of your family, your mother flew in from Texas. What does it mean to you that she's here for this big game? My mother, my son, my girl, her kids, like everybody's here, man. And this is the best thing that could have ever been for me, man, to be here in Albany with my teammates, with my family, man. I'm truly blessed, and I'm going to play hard for my name. I'm sure they're very proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. I just got chills, man. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Well done, Meredith, with Jeremy Richardson and almost an interception by James Romaine covering D.J. Stevens. They needed that one. He ran this route for D.J. Stevens. And, and this is a great job. This is indicative of what he's been able to do all season. But we saw a lot of soft zone, a lot of too much giving Tommy Grady time to see the field and make plays. But he runs this route for D.J. Stevens. Terrific coverage. You just got to bring that thing in. Just got a sneak peek at Les Moss, the assistant coach of the year in the AFL. His father, Perry Moss, was a story coach in the AFL. And Clint Dalzell, joining Perry Moss, is the only three-time coach of the year award winners in league history. Uh, Perry Perry was a guy could go out and get some talent as well. He knew the game and gave guys great opportunities. That's two. That's two plays that he had his hands on. You gotta make it. James Romain with a pass breakup, the league's defensive player of the year on fourth down, a turnover on downs. It's somebody. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. We'll take you to the Wayback Machine. 1987, the first Arena Bowl. The Denver Dynamite rolled over Pittsburgh, 45 to 16. Gary Mullen, you remember him, said nine I do. catches. I do, I do. 123 yards and three touchdown passes. He was your MVP. And it was a lot of fun at the old Igloo in Pittsburgh. And they're dancing in the aisles in Albany. They should be at Transfinder Field. Their empire rolling up by three touchdowns, but a turnover on downs moments ago by their offense. Well, they'll look for their defense to stand up tall for them again. But Philadelphia has to find a way to get it in the end zone. Dan Rodabach, can he capitalize? High throw. Darius Prince chased by. National League. And that was for the Massachusetts Pirates playing out of Worcester, Mass. And Norrells has been a good find for Rob Keefe and company. He has, and, it, and has come on of late. I mean, Homer's been there all season, done a nice job. This young secondary man, and, and Rob, the way Rob coaches, it gives you confidence. Does that make sense? Like he, oh yeah, he gives his young players confidence. To do things and, and get some strong mentally. There will be a second and goal coming up for Philadelphia as we start the fourth quarter. Will Albany complete the deal and win its first title in 20 years? Find out coming out. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Arena Bowl 32 on ESPN2 with Albany in control as we start the fourth quarter. Good to have you with us with Sid Bonner. I'm John Mita Perel and said defense has set the tone for Albany along with that explosive offense. I, I hate to say this and it's going to come out of my mouth, but defense wins championships. You can get some stops, more stops, and put points on the board. Like look at that there, 54-yard interception return, arena bowl record, and then you get a punch out for Terrence Moore. How many times have we called his name? There he is right there, shutting down Burns in the red zone. 
you got to go into the bag of tricks. And when you're doing that with Dan Radabaugh, that's not in your favor. What a play by Jeremy Richardson moments ago in a second and goal facing this Albany defense. Second and goal at the six for Dan Radabaugh. The soul, they haven't scored since the second quarter. Radabaugh, the pump fake to the end zone for Reynolds, an incomplete, but a flag. Will it be pass interference? Yeah, absolutely. That's a good call. Against Cheatham Norris. Yeah. But now you're, you're going to get. Defensive pass interference, number 22. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line and an automatic first down. The great thing is these guys have let him play. You got to make that call there because he is bear hugged on Darius Reynolds in the back of the end zone. You see Dan, the defender's back turn. He just tries to give his receiver a chance to make a play. Norrell's holding on. That was and like the I, hug I'm okay, you. But I'm okay with that. That's okay. It was like the hug you gave J.J. Rattering on oh. the golf course today after he made a putt. I haven't seen the guy in a while, man. Come on. <laughs> Take it easy. <laughs> That's QB love. I'm just jealous. Third and goal. Terrence oh, Moore. Right. How about Moore? Terrence Moore. Man. He is industrious. This is a, a special type of play. The problem here is Darius Reynolds can't get jammed there. He's got to try to get by and outside. Prince tries to react, but they're two on one there. And the Jack linebacker has to take the, the uncovered guy, but more with the diving stab. Great play. So a second and goal. Three wide stacked. Reaching high for the catch is Lonnie Outlaw, and he brought wow. it down. What a grab by Outlaw. A lanky target and a huge touchdown for the Soul. They snapped their scoreless streak dating back to the second quarter. That, that's big boy football right there, but at six foot six, you got to somehow make this play. The great part is watch how he makes the catch and never has a chance to pull it in. Strong hands and then just rips it away because that's terrific coverage. Just a better catch. And outlaw 10 touchdowns during the regular season. That was a three yarder. And the misfire by Kenny Spencer. Spencer missed 14 extra points this season. That hurts their cause. But another look. Radabaugh to outlaw. Over the top. And he brings it down. Cheatham Norrells. And Outlaw was the beneficiary of a good throw by Radabaugh. I know I save money by bundling with USAA. Home, auto, life insurance, anything we get, we get through USA. And they give us excellent customer service every time. I'll never leave USA because they care about us and they save us a lot of money. Bundle and save with USAA Insurance. Philadelphia finally gets back on the board and let's take a look how you get all these DBs lined up in a line right here It's advantage offense. They're gonna pick each other off and somebody's gonna clear let it roll guys And watch Lonnie outlaw takes an inside release and just gets enough behind Norrells at the back of the end zone and then he has to make a terrific catch to finish it Beautiful play and a great catch by Lonnie outlaw Yes, it was, and Kenny Spencer will wait to tee it up. It looks like an onside kick attempt is coming, and here it comes. Albany gets it at the 10. Our Keith Brown just brought back to the team, and J.J. Roderick, our old quarterback, has Lonnie Outlaw on the sideline. Lonnie, you finally broke the ice, get the scoring going in the second half here. Take us through that last play. Uh, we just had bunch no more, 93 broom. Uh, Dan threw a good pass. I had to make the play. What are you going to need to do this fourth quarter to get back in the game? Offense just got to continue to score. Defense get a stop. We'll be all right. Thanks, Lonnie. But a gamble said they go for the possession game, and Albany now is in the red zone at the 10. And good move by Clint Dalzell to go for an outside kick. I think so. You want to short the field. If you can get a stop and not allow Quentin Sims to get going. That's a good way for their defense to start as Malachi Jones was flummoxed. And it's an incompletion. So Philadelphia looks feisty now. The backwards throw, that was a live ball. Yep. 
Good job of hustling by Malachi Jones to get on it. But a swing of emotions in arena football. That's why Dalzell gambling a bit, going for another possession when he wanted to ride the momentum after the outlaw catch. Outlaw 6'7 receiver in his fifth year from Miles College. Quite a target for Dan Rodabaugh, but now second and 16 after the six yard loss. With Quentin Sims in motion, he has four touchdown catches. The oh, pressure's on, got a and pressure. almost a pick by Darius Reynolds. Philadelphia generating pressure for the first time tonight, and it came straight up the middle. And Malik Forrester, who had three sacks in the series against Washington, really gave them a spark. You get a look right up front, and that's off the edge first. He has to step inside, and the two middle guys keep working. And that is a rarity right there. When you see Tommy Grady dumped on the ground, that rarely happens. But they're going to need a lot more of that in order to turn this game around. Grady was only sacked twice this year. Both by Philadelphia. So a clean pocket throughout the season for Grady. Sims in motion again on third and long. A pump fake. Another souvenir for a fan is you can take the football home if you catch it in the AFL. And more pressure. More pressure on Tommy Grady. We haven't seen any of this from the soul. No, they're off kilter offensively in some anxious moments for Les Moss, their offensive coordinator and the assistant coach of the year. As he expresses some disdain towards Tommy Grady. And now they're going to attempt a field goal from Adrian Trevino. Well, two things. Offensively, if you're kicking this field goal, you can't take a playoff up front and allow someone to block a kick. Defensively, if you're receiving and if you're receiving this kick, you got to make sure the ball's caught by your returner. If the kick is missed and off the net, can't, aff can't afford to give an opportunity for an easy score for Albany here. The upbacks have got to do their job. That's good. He's got it from 33 yards. Big kick for the kicker of the year, Adrian Trevino. That's his first make of the season for field goals, and it's money time for him and money time for Albany as they're up by 18 at Transfinder Field in the Capital Region. Discover card? Hi, do you have a travel card? We do. The Discover It Miles card. Earn unlimited 1.5 miles on every purchase. Plus, we'll match your miles at the end of your first year. You'll match my miles? Yeah. Mile for mile. And no blackout dates or annual fee. Nice. I was thinking about taking a scuba diving trip. I love that. Or maybe go surfing. Or not. OK, maybe somewhere else. Maybe a petting zoo. Can't go wrong. Can't get eaten. Earn miles. We'll match them at the end of your first year. Plus, no annual fear of blackouts. The Discover It Miles card. Albany moments ago with a 33-yard field goal from Adrian Trevino to take the 18-point lead. With Seth Bonner, I'm John Mita Perel, J.J. Raderink, and Meredith Gorman on the sidelines, and a cast of thousands with you on ESPN2. Producer Russ Winham, director Mark Ballard. And everybody's doing an outstanding job on the production level. And I hope you've enjoyed it thus far. It's been a lot of fun throughout the year on arena football broadcasts as Jordan Williams takes it off the net and gets blasted out of the Albany special teams unit. Dan Rodabaugh's night, the veteran quarterback for Philadelphia, looked good early, he said, and found Darius Prince. And he's a steady guiding hand, and especially now in this waning moments of the fourth quarter, they'll need it. Yeah, they'll need him to, to finish this game strong. The record breaking arena bowl completion there to Darius Reynolds. I'll tell you what, he's he's Hall of Fame resume already. Hall oh, of Fame. Yeah. But right here is where those moments are made for you when you finish this game and give your team a chance to get back. Wall, BJ Bunn. That was very smart of him to grab it off the wall because it's still in play. Bunn showing a veteran hand there. He's only a rookie from UNC Pembroke. This is a great catch. Like he, I mean, he has to stop and reach back for it to make this catch. And then he gets back inside and is able to drive forward. He's so strong with the ball in his hands after the catch. So Radaba hits Bunn again. He gets tied up by Tevin Homer. How many times have you seen anybody be able to get this kid on the ground? 
Not many. <laughs> He's strong. He's, He's 210 strong. pounds. He's a strong cat and knows how to run with it. He's a yak specialist. That's Absolutely. yards after catch. He's got a little Julian Edmund in his game. Feisty guy. I don't know if he. I don't know if he's as feisty or salty as Julian is just yet. Maybe not, but he's on a good track. Darius Reynolds across the middle to the 19, brought down by Cheatham Norris. So Philadelphia, a bit of an up-tempo offense now, and it's working for them, needing every bit of it as we hit the eight-minute mark of the fourth quarter. Yeah, that's, that's a special play and, and a good job of reading coverage. But you got to get it in the zone here. Quick out to Prince at the barrier, and Maurice Leggett meets him. Leggett, the first half, a 54-yard pick six, the longest interception return for a score in Arena Bowl history. Former Kansas City Chief special teamer. So you see the softness. They're playing man still, but they're just soft. They're going to give space and allow you to catch and then rally up and force Dan to throw balls over the top of guys or in the tight windows. And you got to be aware of. Darius wow. Reynolds is strong and he's inside the five. Reynolds carrying a few defenders with him, eventually tracked down by Cheatham Norrells. Yeah, Nor and Norrells has some words for him, and I don't know if I'm talking if I'm Norrells after this play. It is you still got the lead. You didn't let him score. However, he looked like he got the worst end of that deal. Reynolds, a prolific career in the AFL. From Iowa State, he's 215 pounds, and they'll send three receivers to the near side of your screen. To the end zone for Reynolds and broken up, Maurice Leggett. And Terrence Moore combined, Moore a bit slow to recover as Leggett was calling for the interception, but he could not hold on. And he, Dan tries to fit this in the tiniest of windows. And if he just, if he's just a half a second more patient, he might have had something he really wanted inside. Watch the late come inside right there underneath by Prince, just underneath. But he tries to force it in between two. Well, that was close. Look at it. Very close. Almost came up with it. Back judge had nothing of it, though. Pump fake by Radabon. He smartly throws it away in the vicinity of Darius Prince. They're trying to, trying to run, run the screen inside. And what Albany is doing to them in the red zone, because they know Clint likes to use his backs and his tight end, what Albany's doing is playing what's called a dog. So instead of the Mac linebacker blitzing right away, he's going to sit and see what's going on first and then react. You know Terrence Moore is going to be able to react. He understands the Jack linebacker spot better than anybody that's ever played it. Yep. But they're just reading and staying home and then getting there the last second. Third and goal at the two for Radabaugh for the end zone. He's had a hold of Reynolds. The bad part is you get the penalty, but the clock is still running. Number 22. The penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Automatic first down. And Norrells is hu just hugging him the whole time on, on inside. Watch him put his arm right there. See his right arm. You can see it on his white jersey inside. He's hugging Darius Reynolds the whole time on that route. If you're Rob Keefe, are you okay with that? Yeah, the clock's still running, and right. they haven't scored. First and goal, Adrian Ferns had 12 touchdowns this year, but he gets stymied. Good hit by Maurice Leggett. What an addition Leggett has been to this Albany defense since he was signed a few weeks ago. And, and and this came for the also, CFL. Also, you got to give give some credit out front to Brantley. Yeah, Harold Brantley, defensive lineman from Northwest Missouri State, a rookie, 300 pounder. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Devonte Lambert, number 95. I thought it was 94, Aaron Tiller, but 95, Devonte Lambert from Auburn, submarine, got underneath this man, not allowed the offensive lineman to get any kind of push. Second and goal at the one, Radabaugh for Outlaw. 
And Norrells almost came down with it over the wall. Philadelphia's had trouble in tight red zone situations tonight. Well, they can't. They're, they're getting sticky co sticky coverage, which means man-to-man -man with hands-on. And they're just getting out physical right now. Look at all the DBs up on the line catching and playing the receivers. you got to run around. You're not just going to beat these guys by trying to just run by them. you got to run around. What's their mindset on third and goal at the one? Well, right now, Clint's probably thinking, I haven't been able to, I can't run it. Who can win? And I'm looking either to Dari either of the Dariuses. Adrian Furge trying to spin to the goal line, but he loses yards. Stood up by Jeremy Richardson and made a huge play earlier on fourth and goal and also helped out by Devante Lambert, the man said spoke about rookie from Auburn. So they lose yardage. Philadelphia acting as if it's allergic to the red zone. Keith Newell is down, offensive lineman from Delaware State. They're just submarine and getting underneath. And they're gonna have to bring in Chris Bowles, rookie out of Illinois. And listen, I, I've been in this position as a play caller. It's hard. It's it's tough when you can't dial it up or you don't have an idea how to make your guys successful down there like they what, can't they don't have an answer right now well, what is Albany doing to fluster them um, they're hitting first yeah winning the one-on-one I mean, battles literally right? I mean it's not even close look up front you look at what's gone on in the red zone up front they've been in the backfield every time there, there's I mean, just watch up front. Look up front by the Albany defense. Stale, stalemate, stalemate, stalemate. Nobody from Philadelphia is crossing the line, and, and that's a passing play, so that's okay. Nearly intercepted, miscommunication, but look at that, stalemate. Push back in the backfield. You got a Jack linebacker that reads it so fast and comes downhill. I mean, it's 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 been tough. And now you throw a guy there in there that hasn't played against either Rodney Fritz or Joe Sykes on the other side. Tough task. <laughs> I'm going to wish you good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and right home if you need help. Chris Bowles in there for Keith Newell. Bowles, 6'4", 320 from Illinois. The center for Philadelphia is Philip Keith Manley. He's 6'4", 315. Fourth and goal at the two. They're over two on fourth down conversions. What do they have in their bag? Quick flip oh. and no go. Stopped by Tevin Holder on Darius Prince. A turnover on downs. There's a flag down. Hey. Hey. Rolling on the field. The runner was short of the goal line. The ball goes over to Albany. First down. After the play was over, unsportsmanlike conduct, number six of Philadelphia, 10 yard penalty will be added on. Automatic first down. Frustration for Darius Prince as Tevin Homer, the all rookie performer, the all arena performer, continues to make an impact. And, and help be part of that frustration, right? For Darius Prince. I yeah. mean, Listen, these guys came in here with a plan, and they've not wavered one second. Even early on, when they were beat a few times, they've continued to make things happen defensively. What a performance by this defense. And it would not surprise I mean, me to see Homer get a lot of looks around the NFL set as he had one two years ago with the Washington Redskins, but he has that type of ability. Well, 6'1", six, six as a corner, long, rangy, can tackle. Inside handoff to Michael Benson, who almost broke free. Boom, boom is pulled down. And now we have a fight between James Romaine and DJ Stevens. Stevens and Romaine throwing some haymakers. Romaine, defensive player of the year, and Stevens clearly energized. Likely both ejected. 
This crowd of over 12,000 at Times Union Center at Transfinder Field. Two minutes and eight seconds away from a celebration. But that was problematic on both sides. It was. You can't. I mean, come on. Can't have it. After the play, there was timeout called by Philadelphia. After the play was over, personal. Fouls will offset. Both players are disqualified. James Romaine and DJ Stevens. in the house and this guy was a huge part of the arena football renaissance in Albany he's touched down Eddie Brown with JJ Ratter thanks John Eddie you electrified this place 20 years ago what is it like to be back here right now that's the awesome feeling coming back and hearing the crowd scream you get goosebumps uh, Albany has always been a great place for arena football and as you can see tonight the tradition continues 20 years later what does it mean to you and maybe former players to see it come back and come back so strong on a night like this? I, I, it means a lot. It means a lot of things that we did. We were successful and have the Empire come and continue that tradition, uh, bringing families back to watch the games and enjoy the games. It just says we did some really good things, and I'm very happy and proud of the Empire as well as the Albany community. Now, with the introduction you received at the beginning of the game, could you put the helmet on and get one more route, one more Poco route? Well, I'll have to give them a contract settled first before I can do that. <laughs> Absolutely. I bet they'd be willing to do that. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, JJ and Eddie Brown. Man, what a presence electrifying the crowd earlier wearing the Malachi Jones jersey in the pregame introductions. And he has a magnetic smile and a magnetic personality. You played against him for many years, said Bonner is. Michael Benson gets hit hard. He was, he was fantastic, man. When he got his, he got his hands on the ball, it was a wrap. I don't care how far down the field. 20 years ago this month, Albany, then known as the Firebirds. Eddie Brown, the MVP with four touchdowns. Mike Pulaski was the quarterback. How about running the ball as well? The jet sweep, and then Pulaski finding him in the corner. And, you know, he could dance with the best of them. His celebrations were legendary. Were spectacular. <laughs> Extremely legendary. Played against him many times, man. This guy was, was all that. He could do it all, run routes, catch in the red zone with strength. On third and short. Jones in motion. Grady's going for him in the end zone. And a flag on Dwayne Hollis at the soul. That's pass interference. Defensive pass interference, number 22. Ten-yard penalty and an automatic first down. And this is an exceptional coverage right here. All he has to do is turn and find the ball. You can't follow him face up through the back of the end zone, right? So yep. if he just turns, that's good coverage. Turn and lean. Turn and look for the ball because he's in perfect position on this play. And... They draw the penalty. That's what they always tell you, right? If you're a defensive back in any league, turn your head, look for the ball. Well, you got to lean. You got to lean so you don't fade away and the receiver can't fade away from you. But you're already 30 yards down the field. I mean, how much further are you going to chase them without knowing what's happening? Especially when it's the receiver and the offensive player of the year in Malachi Jones. But that might be your exclamation point. Toss sweep to Jones, who scored a couple times on rushes this year. Just trying to run clock. As the Soul burn their final timeout with 80 seconds remaining. A valiant effort by Philadelphia. I think we both thought this would be a one possession type game. Maybe a touchdown, maybe a field goal, but. 
Albany in the playoffs has simply been dominant. Baltimore too, didn't have a chance in the first round series. Philly had a chance. Bal Albany just too good. And too many mistakes by Philly in this game to, to not give themselves a chance. Started off well for Philadelphia. It was 21 21 at one point, but Albany pulled away. And a large part of that was Quentin Sims with four touchdowns in the first half as he converts inside the 15 for a first down. No timeouts left for the soul. And the Empire just a minute away from an Arena Bowl title. They were 10 and 2 in the regular season, 6 and 1 at Transfinder Field. A distinct home field advantage. This crowd, over 12,000. Large part of their success, Rob Keep talks about it all the time, what they mean to this community. The Capital Region has embraced the Empire every single day. I mean, this, when I'm in this building, I, I, I'm literally sweating because it is so good. Feels great to be in here. Now, Tommy Grady is now a member of the community. He lives in Albany full time, and he had a phenomenal game. The two time league MVP, that one to Quentin Sims, and another one. Just so consistent, said they'll get the time in the pocket. He's untouchable, and Sims was huge as well. He was, and they, they just developed this trust what it is and everyone likes to say they develop a connection but the trust the trust that they have in one another especially down in the red zone and, and listen early on Philly gave Philadelphia gave Tommy so much time to throw playing zone behind it so you got all these huge open windows they allowed him to be comfortable and get in the rhythm and if Tommy Grady gets in a rhythm you're not gonna stop him he is Special throwing the ball. He is accurate, can make every throw on the field, and they were not able to get pressure on him. And finally, as already one of the greatest quarterbacks to play the game, he's able to add that championship to his resume. Yeah, 142 touchdown passes in 2012 for Utah. They go into victory formation, and the, let the celebration begin in Albany. The Albany Empire. The city of champions for the first time in 20 years. Their second AFL title, Tommy Grady, our Transfinder player of the game. Embraced by his teammates and by the soul. Confetti rains down at the Times Union Center. From pillar to post, the Albany Empire, the top team in arena football 2019. They dominated in all phases and a huge part of their 18-point win. We knew about their explosive offense averaging 65 points per game entering this matchup. Didn't put that number on the board, but man, they produced, especially in the second half when they flummoxed the sole offense, not too shabby itself, led by Dan Rodabaugh, who was very good at times, but had some rocky moments, especially on fourth down. And Maurice Leggett helped turn the momentum as well with a 54-yard interception return. And we're going to head downstairs to J.J. Raderink with a special guest. Coach Keith, after last year, you were so close. You were the number one team in the league. You did again this year. What does this feel like to come back after that? Well, first and foremost, I think every player on my team would say that God is good. A lot of prayers, man. Uh, unfinished business was a motto. It was on the back of our helmets. We felt like we were on a mission, right? 1-0 was the goal every single week. The guys had dedication, perseverance. Think of the adversity that we battled in this game. Said it earlier, metaphor for life. We were committed. We were committed. Organizational goal, total commitment. Uh, Oh, unbelievable teamwork. It's, it's an unbelievable feeling. Before the game, I saw everyone. Everyone looked just really relaxed. You told the sir during the week that you were treating this like any other game. Is that how it went? Yeah, so 
This is my fifth one. Coach Moss has been in 13 of these. Coach Ewer's been in five himself. And there's a, there's a, a process to this. Let's not get too hyped too quick. You have to learn how to control your emotions. Obviously, everybody thinks I'm kind of a, a wild guy. So them seeing me stay even keel all week, I think really helped them. But the goal was to focus every single play. Don't get too high, don't get too low. Focus on the mission. Now it's time to celebrate. Now you've been here before uh, in Spokane. Does this feel any different? Well, every team's different, right? And, and no two teams are alike. Long time coming for myself. I, I think for me personally, never stop trying. Never quit. No matter what you're going through in life, keep pushing. Real champions get up when they're down. And these guys listen to me every day. I'm so proud that we were able to put this team together. But it feels unbelievable. This is where it works. The Capital Region, Albany, this is arena football at its finest. So proud for everyone involved. You may be the wild one, but you're also a champion. Congratulations, awesome. Coach. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, guys. Back to you. First Arena Bowl championship in the city of Albany in 20 years. You're a big part of that tonight with four touchdowns. When you think about this past season, what comes to mind? Hey, man, the fans. This is a great team. We did it for the city. I love this confetti, man. We the champs. Thanks so much. Thank you. So the celebration continues on Transfinder Field, and it will continue all week. These fans with a lot to celebrate. They deserve it. They're Albany Empire with 10 wins in the regular season, just two losses. They rolled through the playoffs. They blew out Baltimore, and they entered this one on a high, and then they throttled the Philadelphia Soul. The Soul had three championships in, league in their history, and this is the second in the history of the Albany franchise, first known as the Firebirds, the first title in 20 years. Ryan Cave was injured, their offensive lineman of the year. As he was part of this offensive line, which kept Tommy Grady upright. They allowed just two sacks all season, and that was the tone tonight as well. No secret, if Tommy Grady is rushed heavily, you have a chance. And Philadelphia just could not generate a consistent pass rush. And Quentin Sims, who was you just heard with Meredith Gorman had four touchdowns, all of them coming in the first half. Five touchdown passes by our Transfinder player of the game, Tommy Grady. And that's a huge reason why Albany won this one 45 to 27. And Meredith Gorman has the defensive player of the game, Tevin Homer, the rookie from Florida Tevin, Atlanta. but you're a rookie, and you came into this league playing like a veteran right away. But in the playoffs especially, you really stepped your game up. How are you able to play so composed in these huge moments? I got one thing to say, though. Happy birthday. Happy early birthday to my brother, Trey. I love you. Let's do it. Um, but we just we just trust our coaching. We saw it on film. We saw everything on film. We know what they're going to do. We just got to... Put it all in the field. You know, I gave a couple mistakes early in the game, but I know I'm gonna come back and make a play. You just gotta just live in the moment. Be where your feet are. That's what I was told a long time ago. And doing this in Albany with fans surrounding you on the field right now, fans loud all game long. What does this moment mean to you? It, it, it's, I love it. You know, this is why we do it. This is why we do it. We, we get to show this city, brought this city back 20 years later. Uh, the uh, Firebirds brought it, and we got it this year, man. Uh, it, it's amazing. We just love, they, the city just give us good love. And we just love them back, and we show it right here. Great job and congratulations again, Tevin. Guys. All right, Meredith, thank you. Tevin Homer He's certainly on the NFL radar, the XFL radar for that matter as well, with that league coming into play in February. And the Empire triumphant. How about 61 points against Baltimore back on July 27, 62 against Baltimore. They take an aggregate in the first round playoff series in the Arena Football League. So they beat Baltimore 61-26 and 62-21. And just another superb effort beating Philadelphia 45-27. There's Joe Sykes, big number one, along with number three, Jeremy Richardson, who made a huge play on fourth and short to help bolster their momentum and keep this surge going for the Empire. On the defensive side, you now that defense was under publicized, but they still stood strong tonight. And J.J. Ratterink is on the field with our Transfinder player of the game, Tommy Grady. I'm here with Tommy Grady. Tommy, you've been so close before. How does this one feel? This is awesome, man. That's a total team effort tonight. 
Our offense uh, got, got stopped a couple times. Our defense picked us right up. So it's a whole, a whole team effort. Now, quarterback to quarterback, I was looking in your helmet the whole time. This moment didn't seem too big for you. Did you realize it was the arena bowl? Because you didn't look like it. You look cool and calm. Yeah, think about it. You know, we, we knew it was a big opportunity for us. We don't come, the arena bowls don't come along that often. So it was, it was a huge win for us. And who's this little one right here? Is this past cold bedtime? Way past cold bedtime. I think tonight. I think tonight it's okay. We'll let you get to celebrate. Hey, JJ. All right. Thank you very much, JJ. What a moment for Tommy Grady and his young son. As we get set for the trophy presentation, you see Randall Bow, the commissioner of the AFL, with Ron Jaworski and Seth Bonner. My partner on the broadcast is on the podium for the awards presentation. And they stay there, and they stay there. I won't stop now. Whoa. Keep your hands up, get them in the sky for the homies that ain't making them. My folks locked down. Whoa. I never went nowhere. No. What they say in loot is back. Yeah. Blame it on that conjure. The hood call it looter yak. Hey. And I'm on this foolish track. So I spit my foolish flow. Whoa. My hands go up and down, down. like strippers' booties go. Whoa. My verses still be serving. Yeah. Tight like a million virgins. Yeah. Last time on the college remix. Now I'm on the original version. Ah. Can't never count me out. No. Y'all better count me in. No. Got 20 bank accounts. Accountants count me in. And they stay there, and they stay there. In my low low, head on a swivel, you know serving me's a no no. Clean as a whistle so as I pull out in my road You look yellow. back on your short time in Albany, what do you think? Let's do it again. It's time to do it again. I'll take a couple weeks off and then it's, it's back to the drawing board and try to get the guys to come back so we can do it again. Now I think a lot of the Albany fans and people watching you wonder, how did you come onto this team? learn everything right away and be able to make such an impact on the field right off the bat. Well, I'm no stranger to Coach Keith. I, I played with him in 2013 in Utah. And when I got the call, I was actually in Jacksonville <laughs> enjoying my life. And I was on the verge of ending all, all the football just all together and, and just and just spend time with my kids. And when he called, his energy alone just brought life into me and the love of the game of football all over again. And once he said, do you want to win a championship? I said, I'm all in. <laughs> I love that. That is so special. And that you guys certainly did. Well, enjoy this night and congratulations again. All right, thank you. Guys. To Commissioner Randall Bowe, who's going to present a special trophy to Dan Nolan and Ed Swire. There you go. On behalf of the Arena Football League, I'm happy to crown the Albany Empire as the 2019 champions. And real quick, let me let me grab Dan for one question real quick. Dan, yes, sir. bringing this team back to the Capital Region, what's it meant to you? How, how does this feel right now? Well, what really feels good is to have the win, but what feels better is to have 12,000 maniacs out there supporting this team. Without you, we don't have a team. Thank you. That's awesome. That is great. Commissioner Bo. We've, we've got another special award to give out. We do. And this one's going to go to a guy that's high energy. He doesn't need any help. We're going to give this to Rob Keefe. Rob, your team has been the best team this year. You won the championship. And that's your belt. The Arena Football League champions. Dude, that's That is 
crazy. Rob, Rob, take me through this. We talked about the unfinished business all year. You guys have ba battled and, and stayed on the grind. How have you kept this team mentally tough all season? It's all about these players. First and foremost, all you Albany fans, this one's for you. This is where it works. Arena football works in the capital region. It works in places like Albany. Two years ago, we sold the players what this could be. They believed in us. They focused on the mission. They didn't stop. These players played hard every single play, and they mission accomplished. They got it done tonight. That's awesome. Congratulations, Rob. We appreciate your time. And now for one of the final awards, we got to bring up one of the tallest guys on the planet, Commissioner Bo. Tell us who our MVP is tonight. The MVP of the 2019 Arena Bowl is Tommy Grady. You've been one of the great ones for a long time, but to finally be able to put that championship belt on, to get that ring, take me through what you're feeling right now. It feels good, man. I've been, uh, been playing for a long time, and finally get one, it's huge. You know, when people ask me if I got a championship, I can say yes now. Tell you what, man, you, you, you guys led one of the top offenses I've seen in this league, led by yourself, ability to throw the ball. Talk about your teammates and your big guys up front, how valuable they were for you. All right, first off, it starts off his line. We got by far the best offense line in the NFL. They played great all year, and our receivers are obviously really dangerous. So you know, it's a, it a huge, uh, huge advantage for us every week. Let's hear it for Tommy Grady, your Arena Bowl 32 MVP. And we'll throw it back up to John Mita Perel. All right, Seth, thank you very much. Well done on the stage with the Albany Empire as they raise the trophy and they get the first year championship belt. That's a newcomer to the celebration here on the arena football stage. And man, it will rage all week in the Albany region. Rob Keefe certainly deserves it. He was not coach of the year. Clint Dalzell of Philadelphia won those honors, but Keefe celebrates the arena bowl championship they only lost two games all year one of them was june 29th at philadelphia 54 to 43 but they certainly clearly were the most talented team and it was proven tonight so albany and tommy grady with five touchdown passes four of them to quentin sims great production from their defensive line jeremy richardson a huge fourth down stop that man mo ruffin's a big part of their offensive line D.J. Stevens was ejected in the fourth quarter for fighting with James Romain, the defensive player of the year of Philadelphia. But all in all, it added up to a dominant performance for the champion Albany Empire. That puts a wrap not only on Arena Bowl 32, but also a great AFL season. Once again, our final score, Albany 45, Philadelphia 27. For our entire crew, director Mark Ballard, producer Russ Winham, Meredith Gorman, J.J. Roderick, and Seth Bonner, I'm John Mita Perel. Thanks for watching The Albany Empire, are your Arena Bowl 32 champions. Good night from Albany. Have a great week, everyone.